Colorado River. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's... It, it extends down into Arizona right here. Okay. This wilderness area. And you need a pa You need to win the lottery to get. Yeah, in there. you got to win the lottery to get a permit. Hmm. Let me show you how. To... Win, how to win exactly a lottery? Where it is. Well, I, I see it's east east of Kanab, so it looks like a good hour's drive. It's about about an hour's drive. It's 40, 45 miles to the trailhead, probably. All right, so this is said to be an old library. Now the library is more in the end of town. This was the library was in town. Pretty pretty close. Possibly a Carnegie. Now it's turned into a museum. Pretty neat. Oh, it's out of season. Hmm. Wow, they're building something major here. Right, so for this park, they actually have a sign that says, no dogs allowed. So what that means to people <clears throat> is walk your dogs through fast. All right, I think I got herpes. This has been going on for about a week now. It's just getting bigger. Right, I'm increasingly frustrated with uh, my cooking options. Uh, I've been thinking that maybe I should get a five gallon bucket because one of my biggest concerns, problems, is the winds. And I measured it out. It is about the, the length. This is a, we're talking tall, long, uh, cooking apparatus. All right, so I got a stack. I got to use this stack this on top of it, and then stack this on top of it. And it's a tipping problem, but also there's a wind problem. And the wind problem is right here, right underneath. I don't want any wind getting under here, in between here. And it's just annoying because it really slows down the cooking. I measured, I measured it out. It seems like this all measures the length of this rebar. So next time I get close to a hardware store, I'm thinking I'm gonna bring this rebar in and measure a five gallon bucket. I think a five gallon bucket is about this height. I think I could probably put this whole thing this whole cooking apparatus inside a five gallon bucket to protect it from the wind. Because I've cooked in my car and it's dangerous. But one thing that doesn't seem so dangerous is the heat. I don't believe heat radiates the sides enough to affect the wall of, the, of a plastic five gallon bucket. It just barely any heat radiates on the sides. It all goes up it, the way this thing works. And this is amazing too. This this propane canister last survived the summer. This little paint chip right there. It's been getting beat up. Survived the summer. Of course, I, I didn't ever have it directly in the sun. I always made sure it was was buried. But I'm just I'm just so frustrated. I don't. My gut's hurting. I don't want that anymore, and I'm, I'm gonna. I want to focus on cooking in this winter time instead of eating dried foods, like all these peanuts and almonds. I want to get rid of. I, I don't want to eat them as much. I want to be able to to drive water, cook them before I eat them, drive water into the food, and I found this corn. This is not. This is not a short term short time limit corn cooking operation that's this takes some time to cook it's not like oats so i really have to get a good operation going where i could do it long term um and i'm not anywhere near any hardware store that i know of but i'm thinking that what you know when i when i get to a hardware store or something i'm going to get a five gallon bucket and just what I could do is just set it outside the car, is just sit in the car, set that outside, and maybe try cooking with that respect. 
it'll take the five gallon bucket will take up more space in the car and I really need to clean this car out uh, I am not finding good spots uh, I need to look for that today see if I can find anywhere just out oh, maybe 30 minutes outside a city just to have a, pro a spot to clean out the car yeah there's plenty of places to cook around here it's kind of hard to find places to cook usually this cold wind is a cooking killer because I could jack up the, the the flames to the highest setting and still can't get that water to boil and in cold wind like this even cold wind like this can you feel it I got I got to put on an extra pair of pants and everything and this sun uh, sun is all maybe maybe a little bit of a relief but I need to give it more time cook at 1 p.m. maybe if I feel like it the biggest concerns are for cooking are, are tipping because of that tall apparatus I don't see how I can get around having a shorter one having having t everything tip over and the wind the cold cold wind those two things are not not uh, not very easy to to overcome and then the public public is definitely a, a factor as well because you you get you get uh, cops coming up saying you can't cook cook near your car and stuff or oh this is a fire hazard area and there's all kinds of homes around like the homes are more safe than than my method of cooking people burn down their homes all the time what's better to be gritty or grungy my name is fleeing felon it's pretty neat scenery around here They must get some amazing floods through here. Cut deep. Yeah, I think the scenery is really neat. I'm in a river channel, flood channel. It's got quite a bit of vegetation. All right, at the park here, and I'm looking up at the mountains, and look at that. I think there's people up there. Native Americans, maybe. Right? Just sitting up there, staring at the sun. What a time to be up there. How did they get up there? <laughs> I want to get up there. How did they get up there? For the backside? I saw there's a trail that goes in between, but does that is that a good trail? All right, they're starting to move now. I think they, they entered through the front. Man, they sat up there for a good hour. So they got that trail that uh, probably goes into the gorge. All I need to do is go down this road then and go as deep as I can into that gorge. I'm sure that's what they did. These escape uh, camper vans come in different colors and artistry. <laughs> There's another one. Alright, so I can absorb some loss. I got a bucket for $4, maybe 50 cents. Try to cook in that. And as I was coming back here, I saw one sitting in somebody's yard. And I was thinking, wow, you know, I could save that money. But I can, I can kind of afford a little bit of loss with my silly experiments. So I think I'd like to get into more of the habits of crushing the fenugreek and then soaking it in the milk. Because I can get more surface area instead of putting the whole seeds in. You don't want to mix bad ideas together. 
like mixing bad ingredients together. You mix bad ideas together, you just get worse ideas. All right, I'm just making a note that something strange has happened last night. I'm missing a couple of items, especially my uh, my amp uh, that I unplug it from my dashboard. I recall specifically unplugging it since I don't know if I did something while I was sleeping or what, but it's completely gone. I, it's unplugged and it's gone. It's it's not in the dashboard. And also some other things are missing. I just I don't know what happened. I didn't I, I didn't do any I, I don't recall doing anything unusual. All right. Well, it, it turns out that I just didn't unplug it. I, I somehow put cloth over this flashing light accidentally. It's a heck of a skyline. I don't know if this picks up well, but it's so neat in the low light to see this red and blue contrast. This area has the most blockiest Minecraft look I've ever seen. The impression that when the fruit, when the dried fruit is hard to smash in the mortar and pestle, it can't be much easier inside my gut. It's a little windy. This is supposed to lead to the top up there somewhere. <clears throat> I haven't even started the climb and I'm already breathing heavy. So messed up. It's cold out, maybe 30s, lower 30s, whoa, I'm not sure which way you go to get up there, it'll probably present itself pretty good, such a pretty contrast between the reds and the greens. looks looks like they're this is a very green ephedra wow breaks off so easy that's a very green one ephedra prefers the hillsides and uh and i guess i never really i never really seen it in the redlands before <laughs> Somebody told me that all this, this red is iron. All this iron in the rocks interferes with my GPS. I haven't really tested that, that theory out yet. <laughs> but I should. Kind of curious about that one. And it really makes me think of Christmas. Even though it's far from Christmas. With this red and green. <laughs> and ephedra is the only desert plant that I know that it's edible. And that's not the most useful plant to know. Yeah, like this. That's ephedra. It's not the most useful bit of information since it, all it does is make my heart race. Not, not exactly great, great for all situations. Not, not exactly the most ideal medicinal. A lot of these are probably quite poisonous. Is this a Fedra? Just, I don't recall, yeah, that's the thing, I don't think it is because it flowers. And I don't recall a Fedra flowering like that. Like this, this is a Fedra. So there's one that looks very similar to a Fedra. I've been noticing a Fedra's got kind of a brown, bottom portion and then 
green on the top. That other one was like just a gray, just all around grayish. <sighs> yeah, I saw the students seem come, they seem like they come from this, this way. 30, and they, they came on a school bus, so I think they're students. 30 kids marching with us with a teacher or whoever. It's very scenic. People took the time to scrape some, whatever you call it, petroglyph. That's a petroglyph instead of a pictoglyph. Pictoglyph. Pictograph. This is probably really dangerous, but how about dipping your feet in the sand? It's very cold. Very cold indeed. Looks like I'm turning into a bit of a sap collector. I saw this on the ground actually. These things are falling on the ground around this type of tree. Smells good. Just gotta break it open. And I've been chewing on one of these saps for about 10 minutes now. It doesn't break down. It can get sticky though. It's like when sap gets really old. This is a dead tree. It, uh, it loses its smell and it darkens. First I'm human, then I'm white, then I'm male. These fruits are delicious and scary. Yeah, they got the little hairs on them. God, those hairs are awful. Thank you. 